Jersey's railway era is now a part of yesteryear. As we head towards the 21st century, we celebrate a railway anniversary. Just 100 years ago, in 1899, St. Obins was first linked by train to Corbeer. The green liveried locomotives with their stovepipe chimneys have long since disappeared. But an abiding link with those days of steam is Jersey's charming railway walk, which follows the former line of the Corbier route. The anniversary seems an appropriate time to ask ourselves, is the railway walk of today on the right track for the third millennium? The three and a half mile walk starts here, beside St. Obin's old railway tunnel. The tunnel was massively extended by the Germans during the occupation. They excavated a labyrinth of concrete-lined side galleries to create a totally bomb-proof military complex. Today, sadly, the entire facility is no more than a storage area, and the original tunnel's second entrance is blocked and faces a neglected and overgrown cutting we can now visualize a potentially exciting future for the location. A future which will really put our railway walk on the map. We give the underutilized tunnel a facelift and with it a dynamic new role in island life. The historic and unique example of subterranean architecture is transformed and becomes St. Obin's first multi-purpose amenity center. Here, Imaginatively designed interpretation facilities could introduce the visitor to not only the immediate area, but also the origins, heritage, natural history, and features of the entire railway walk. Here, a simple stroll could be turned into a memorable and meaningful experience, an information-enriched journey through both landscape and time. Now we've talked the talk, Let's walk the walk. At a leisurely pace, it takes over an hour. So we'll fast track the track and give you a whistle stop tour. With the exception of proposals to introduce a mini gauge railway service, Anticipated changes to the walk itself fall largely into the category of discrete cosmetic improvements. These include, for example, an access point leading from the walk to the shell garden, the provision of milestones and more comfortable and attractive seating, and the planting of shrubs, trees and bushes to screen and soften areas of adjacent suburban development. Unfortunately, the end of the line is very much a dead end. An embankment covered with scrub and bushes, very much an anti-climax to the end of a splendid walk. But let's push through the bushes and see what we can find. At the top of the embankment, we find ourselves confronted by concrete. We're actually on the roof of a huge split-level German bunker built during the Second World War. Before us lies the promontory of Corbier. To the left, the monolithic tower of Jersey's radio station. Ahead of us, the fortifications of Hitler's Atlantic Wall, the offshore reefs, the famous lighthouse. And to our right, we have the magnificent sweep of St. Juan's Bay and views of the other islands.
How can we take advantage of this magnificent vantage point? Let's review the view. What can we do to make the end of the walk a more interesting and attractive destination? Well, let's start by stripping away that tangle of undergrowth, removing the embankment, and landscaping the result. The bunker itself is now exposed. By simply adding stairs and safety railings, we create a rooftop orientation and viewing platform that really does justice to the panorama and the end of the walk. But we can go one step further. The building's interior is spacious, in good condition, and above all, empty and unused. Refurbished, and with its original observation windows unblocked, it's a ready-made location for a visitor centre and a natural launch platform for exploration of the whole Corbier headland. 